Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Jivita Christi, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you B trees as storage strategies in DBMS. So let's begin. First, we are going to see what a tree is. So in computer science, a tree is a widely used abstract data type that simulates a hierarchical tree structure. It has a root value and subtrees of children with a parent node represented as a set of linked nodes. So tree is nothing but a data structure like stacks and queues. And even if you consider the simplest of data structures like arrays, uh, that would be a, an abstract data type. And the same, same thing is a tree in computer science. And it has a hierarchical structure. So you can uh, have different levels at which people are uh, associated and uh, each each node of the tree has uh, is linked with other nodes of the tree, and there is a no node that is right on top, which is known as a root node, and then there are subtrees inside, which are children, and all the nodes are linked together, and we are going to see that with an example very soon. And B trees are used specifically to implement multi-level indices in uh, DBMS. In my previous video, I explained to you the primary index indices and secondary indices, uh, which are clustering and non-clustering. And I also explained dense and sparse indices. But there was a fifth type of index, which is a multi-level index. Now, this is the index that I'm going to talk about in this video. To make this index, we use a B tree, which is a data structure in computer science. So let's see what a B tree is. It's a self balancing tree data structure. Self balancing means uh, at all times, the left and right hand side of the trees are nearly balanced. So it won't happen that the tree is growing on one side and on the other side it is uh, smaller. It will be always balanced, uh, nearly balanced on both the sides. It allows you to search, uh, perform sequential accesses, insert and delete. And if you think about it, what do you do with SQL? With SQL, you write complex queries with select statement in order to search for some data. And when you write any select query, you're actually just searching for some data which is then given to you as an output as a result of the query you've written and the second thing that you might want to do with a select statement is a sequential access so when i'm writing something like select star from instructors without a where clause where there is no condition i just want to see the whole table then that's a sequential access that's what we do what else do we do in um, SQL? We can insert into different tables, insert data into different tables, and we can also perform deletions. We can delete data from the table. And uh, if you talk about update, an update can be easily done uh, with the help of search and um, insert, because update is nothing but searching for the data and then just changing it. So you can perform a search and do an update, edit the data. So for all these purposes, we use SQL, we write queries in SQL. And that's why B-Tree is the most suitable data structure because it allows you to perform all these operations, searching and sequential access, inserting and deleting. It is well suited for storage systems that read and write relatively large blocks of data such as disks. So if you have storage systems um, like DBMS, which we have, and you have lots of data available, and every time uh, the system has to fetch data from the secondary memory, uh, like a hard drive, then uh, for that type of a storage system, system B3 would be very much useful. It is commonly used in databases and file systems, which are a primitive form of a database. Now we're going to see what exactly is wrong with a single level index. So a single level index is, uh, 
is also useful, but uh, when it comes to searching for something, for example, I want to search for an ID 98345, then with a single level index, I have to start from the beginning and then I have to keep searching uh, till I till I reach the end. And suppose I want to search for 98346, then even after looking at each and every row of the table, I will not be able to find this ID since it does not exist. So this is the disadvantage of having a single level index, having to go through the entire table for no reason at all. And that's why we use multi-level indices because it distributes the load and you don't have to read each and every row of the table because in practice, the tables are not so small, they are really large. And when there are large tables, they contain a lot of data and if you need to go through all the data, every time you want to search for one person, it's really not an efficient system. So which is why we use uh, multi-level indices. And multi-level indices look something like this. What happens here is on the bottommost level, you have all the nodes, you have all the data as it is um, available to you. But then on top of it, we create another index. But in this index, we only choose some values from this bottom uh, level to appear in the, on the level above it. And then as you progress, as you proceed from bottom to top, the number of uh, nodes decrease, but it helps you in performing your searches and uh, you'll come to know that about that now. So, here is an example of a B tree. This is what a B tree looks like. And what you can see on the topmost is known as the root node. The, all the nodes in the bottom, which do not have anything else below them, they are known as leaf nodes. And um, this is some of, these are some of the rules that are applied while creating a B tree. And it's okay if you don't get all of them right now. Uh, you'll definitely understand them better uh, when we solve an example. So in a B tree, every node has at most M children. So M is something that is defined before creating the B tree. So M could be anything. If M is four, then every node can have a uh, maximum four children. And at most means the node can have zero children. Uh, but it can minimum zero, but maximum it can be four. The next rule is that every non-leaf node except the root must have at least ceiling M by two child nodes. So other than the root, whatever non-leaf nodes are present, for example, in the second level, whatever you have, they are non-leaf nodes and they are ni uh, neither root nodes. Now, if you see there, then those nodes uh, must have at least ceiling M by two child nodes. So in this case, the tree that we have permits maximum four children per node. And so that means each, uh, each node, each node that is not a non-leaf node must have at least four by two children, which is uh, two children. And you can see all the nodes below the root, they all are having, other than the leaf nodes, of course, they all have uh, more than two children. And the root must have at least two children if it is not a leaf node. So if you've just on, only just begun creating your tree, then you will have only one uh, node in your tree and that node would be the leaf node and the root node both. So in that case, this rule does not apply. But if you have more nodes, more than one node in your tree, then the, ch the, the root node must have at least two children. That's the rule. And finally, a non-leaf node with k children contains k minus one key. So if there are k children in a non-leaf node, it must have k minus one keys. And you can see that from here you have um, if you pick the node uh, 8 and 25, which is there on the left-hand side of the root node, that node is having 
two keys and that's why it has three children. So uh, the rule is satisfied. K children contains K minus one keys. So this is what a B tree looks like. Now, how do you perform searches in this? Suppose I want to search for 67 uh, and let's consider that these are all IDs of instructors uh, on which I've created this type of an index with the addresses of the of all the rows. Now, uh, because I cannot uh, possibly fit on the screen uh, really long five digit IDs, that's why I'm using two digit ones. And let's say that I want to search uh, information about an instructor with ID 67. So what am I going to do in this case? I'm going to go ahead and uh, start from the root node and start comparing. And I can see that there is 30, uh, I can see that there is 30 right on top of the root node. Uh, and if I compare 67 with 30, then 67 is greater than 30. So I need to compare it with the next one, which is 70. So 67 is uh, less than 70. Now notice how all the uh, keys present in all the nodes are in sorted order. This helps us to perform our comparisons. Now 67 is lying between 30 and 70. So I'm not going to look on the left hand side of the root node or the right hand side of the root node. I'm going to look in the middle. So this itself eliminates a lot of possibilities. The left and right parts are parts that I don't have to look at because of the multi-level index. Now, even after going to the middle part, I need to again compare 67 with uh, 40 and with 50. And I can re I'll realize that it is greater than 50. So once again, I, I get to eliminate the left side of 40, 50, the middle part of 40, 50, and only go to the right side. And there, of course, I'll find 67. And in case I was searching for 68, then I'd be following the same procedure. And in the end, after reaching the 67 node, I'll, I'll come to know that there is no 68. So in either of the cases, I didn't have to do much work, uh, not as much work as I would have had to do if it, this had been a single level index. So that's how B trees help us to create multi-level indices that um, work a lot better than normal indices in they, they work a lot better than normal indices that we use and now let's uh, do a small example of a b tree where we are going to create a b tree of order three so first of all i'm going to insert one because it's of order three one node can contain two keys and maximum three children. So that's why I have two boxes drawn out and I want to insert one. It's very simple. Right now, the root node is the leaf node. Inserting two is also fairly simple. Now consider inserting three. What happens then? I do not have space for three, so I will uh, put it in sorted order and pick the middlemost node, which is two and move it up a level. Remember that B tree always grows uh, towards, I mean, B tree always grows upwards. It does not grow downwards. So we never create levels below. We always create levels above. And so because this particular level is full, that's why I'm creating a level above. So there is one, two, three. I'm going to pick from there two because it's the middlemost and I'll take it up. And on the left side of two, there will be one. On the right side of two, there will be three. Now let's insert four. Four is greater than two, greater than three. So it comes uh, next to uh, three. Let's insert five. To insert five, I know five is greater than two and greater than four. So it should come next to four, but there is no space. So like I said, it grows upwards, but there's no need to grow. You just need to pick one of the keys to go up. And because it's three, four, five, and four is in the middle, I will select four to go to the root. Next, let's insert six. This is again fairly simple. 
for six, I need to check six is greater than four, so I can insert it on the right side of four, and it's greater than five, so it will come on the right side of five, and uh, that's where we have inserted six. To insert seven, once again, we have the same problem. There is no space next to six, um, and so we are going to pick a node. So the node that uh, we need to pick is six, which is in the middle. You take six to the top, top level. What happens there is, once again, there are three, three values, two, four, and six. You have to pick one uh, to take to the top level because even this one is full and the B tree grows upwards. So because it's two, four, six, the middlemost is four. So we take four upwards. And once we have done that, then on the left side of four, there is two. On the right side of four, there is six. And then two can be arranged by putting one on left and three on right. Four has five on left and seven on right. And sorry, six has five on left and seven on right. So notice how all the smaller values go on the left hand side and all larger values go on the right hand side every time. And also all the values within a node are always in sorted order. Now let's insert eight. To insert eight, I'll compare it with four. It's greater, so move to the right. Compare with six, it's greater, move to the right. And then you compare it with seven and put it next to seven. For inserting nine, once again, uh, compare nine with four, go to the right, compare nine with six, go to the right, seven, eight, and nine should come right next to eight, but there's no space. So we are going to move or shift eight upwards. So we are shifting eight upwards. After shifting eight upwards, um, what else can we do? We do not need to uh, move anything else. So you can just uh, place nine. Next, let's insert 10. This is fairly simple. You compare 10 with 4, there's no problem. Move to the right, compare 10 with 8. Move to the right of 8 because it's greater. And then compare 10 with 9 and just simply put it next to it. There is space. So this is a B tree created of uh, 10 nodes. Um, and the order of this B tree is 3. So this is how you can create a B tree. A very simple B tree. And I'll tell you more about B trees and also a variation of B trees, which is a B plus tree, in my next video. So, see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.